Would you like to support Cubs Out Loud? One way is to join us over on Patreon. For as little as a buck a month, patrons get early access to our shows, the pre and post show, and various other rewards. You can learn more at patreon.com slash Cubs Out Loud. Thanks to all of our patrons for their support in making this podcast. January 8th, 2023. I'm Jeff. Who's your bear? That's right. I am your bear. I'm Damon. I don't brew the tea. I just serve it. And that makes me Gary. Everyone else is thinking it, and I just say it. And welcome to Comes Out Loud, Bear Podcast of Indeterminate Length, episode number 678. And I'm having a sense of deja vu. I'm not exactly sure. I feel like we need to talk about food. Just eat it, eat it. So, Gary, we're at the beginning of the year. What should we talk about when it comes to food? Well, it's a new year, so let's talk about new dishes. And by dishes, we mean foods, concepts, ideas. So, here's the thing. New dishes? Um, it's question a question mark? Yeah, well, actually, funnily enough, I did actually have a question mark uh, originally for the title, and then somehow I dropped it along the way. Um, so now nothing <laughs> has the question mark. Oops. Anyways, so a- each year, um, new food trends grab our collective attention, right? Like, you know, things come up. I remember years ago, uh, probably 15 or more years ago, like Chipotle was like the hot thing as like oh, a boy. as like a new spice or whatever. Um Right. So, you know, stuff just kind of comes up in our collective, like, uh, what was it? Um, oh, I can't remember what it is. It'll come back to me. Uh, there was a there was a supplement made from not currants, but like black garlic or something. Anyways, so all that being said, <laughs> we know there's new stuff coming in 2023. It's a new year, so. People are going to be, you know, introducing new food products, new concepts, um, and and we obviously can't really predict because we we have uh, we don't have crystal balls, or if we do, they're broken. Um, but we have a whole year ahead of us of eating, mm-hmm. right? So, uh, <laughs> I mean, that's it's, it's just that that comes with the human condition. That's how we survive. Um, so. I kind of was curious about like what we are looking forward to this year that is not the same old, same old. Um, and to help prompt that, there's a couple of uh, links to articles as examples of, of things. Um, mm-hmm. I will admit the first one here from Whole Foods could be a little divisive for people because it's Whole Foods. Um, <laughs> also right. known as Whole, Whole Check. Uh, so... If you're not familiar with Whole Foods, it is a uh, large chain grocery store um, owned by Amazon, and they can uh, sort of sometimes be considered like on the forefront um, of trends or food things. And there are people out there who really get wrapped up in um, going to Whole Foods, uh, right. kind of like Trader Joe's, like they get, you know, kind of very mm-hmm. dedicated. So, um, as an example, one of the first things that they list on their 2023 top 10 food trends um, is an example of something I've never heard of. So, I'm very curious to see if this does become a thing. And it's called Yapon. At least I think that's how it's pronounced. It's Y A U P O N. Yapon. Apparently, this is a holly bush found in the southern region of the U.S. Uh-huh. And happens to be North America's only known native caffeinated plant. Interesting. Indigenous Americans have brewed it uh, apparently for quite some time as an herbal tea. 
um, and prepare it as a black drink consumed uh, during purification rituals. Apparently has a mild earthy flavor um, and it's becoming increasingly popular. And of course, Whole Food you know, is going to start marketing or pushing the stuff out there. And there's a whole series of different products that will probably include this. But so this is what I mean is like, you know, new stuff that comes on the horizon. And I'm kind of like. Hmm. Uh, yeah. Um, man. Okay. Here we go. Um, <laughs> like I started looking through these lists um, and I was kind of like, wow, like this is odd. Cause again, it's not something I will admit that I am, am like have a pulse on as it were. Um, but like looking at some of these things, I was like, okay, it kind of makes sense. But also, why is this a thing? Um, you know, but I, I, as again, as I kind of kept reading and looking through, I kind of understood it. You know, a lot of things nowadays, as kind of this article was going through, um, we are all kind of vaguely, if not specifically aware of, like, our resources are, are slowly going away. Like, there will soon be nothing left as in a word because we're, you know, consuming the world, blah, 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 planet, like everything, blah, blah, blah. Um, and like these things, like some of these things are like looking at ways to use alternative things or use everything so that nothing is wasted. Mm. Um, which I guess, right, which make I guess makes sense in the grander scheme of things. And also, again, also finding ways to be, I will use quote unquote healthy um, with regards to what we're putting in our bodies, because we're all aware of that kind of thing. Like the number two thing here with the whole like using um, the pulp, the nut and oat pulp from when you're making like your milks, um, your non-dairy milks and using it to make things. I kind of get why that would be a thing, because. You know, if you don't know how like oatmeal and stuff is made, it's usually taking the nuts and kind of or whatever and like smashing it and then straining it for lack of a better word. And then you're left with this leftover stuff. And it's kind of like, well, what can you do with it? You usually can't do much with it because the nutrients and whatever has been removed for it because it's for the milk that you created, like the almond milk or the oat milk but now trying to find other ways to do something with it i can understand that i don't know if i want to necessarily eat it though but that's just me <laughs> um, <laughs> um uh another one that was on here that i thought was kind of weird but not weird yeah yeah i'll use the word weird um is what is it it says produce meets pl plaza <laughs> what's that Pasta. Ooh. I'm tired, y'all. Um, and it's like um, essentially plant-based pasta alternatives um, to get the veggie and fruit intake. So I kind of understand that from a perspective because most people don't, you know, there are people that don't want to eat like actual like fruits and vegetables. Sometimes they need to like put it into their diets. And it's an alternative form of, you know, instead of like a heavy carb um, pasta, getting another substitute. And I kind of, I can feel that one um, considering what I just had for um, um, dinner as a perfect example. Um, and I can understand this, using this as a new way to bring in the fruits and vegetables that we, the nutrients that we need. Well, I find it interesting. So like looking at this produce meats pasta as an example, like these are sort of gluten or wheat alternatives, but not like glass noodles or rice noodles. Like this is going in another direction, like cauliflower rice a couple of years ago, like became uh -huh. a big thing. Right. And so this is kind of expounding on that. And so like the examples they have are like hearts of palm linguine, um, cassava spaghetti so these are taking other plants 
and then having them either fortify or replace the 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 concept of whatever the main item is in the dough quote unquote that makes the pasta um spaghetti squash this isn't revolutionary to me yeah. other than it's prepackaged um mm. i've i've made spaghetti squash several times in my lifetime yeah. it's quite yummy um yes. it's quite popular if you're trying to like substitute spaghetti or pasta in your life um, you know, to have something that has more fiber and is, you know, veggie based. So some right. of this stuff I'm kind of like, eh, okay, like, yeah, we'll, it makes we'll sense. see whether or not that make that becomes a thing. I don't know. Yeah, well, th I mean, and that seems like it's something that's been around for a while, anyways. Because I'm pretty sure people have just used some of these things as, as, they grind it up and basically use it as a replacement for the flour in the dough. Right. right. I think the big thing is that these are produced foods. I mean, mm. the spaghetti squash is really the only one that that seems to probably be the most original. And by original, I mean, it comes straight from the plant because you just basically take a spaghetti squash, you roast it, and then you just like cut in strips. You know. Yeah, you, you just like you can you can even take a fork through it and just depending on how well you've roasted it and it kind of becomes the right. Where the other ones seem like they're they're mixing it with other things or, you know, going through some, you know, secretive chemical process or, you know, science, <laughs> whatever you want to call it, to make things. So, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Um, they also think that dates are going to be a big thing. Um, right. Date sugar, date syrup, having dates and things. Now, I will admit I don't eat dates very often, but, ooh, baby, are they yummy. Right. Um, especially if they're, like, stuffed and bacon wrapped. <laughs> um, sometimes called devils on horseback. God, are they yummy. Um, but that's kind of taking a healthy food and then making it really not, not healthy. healthy. <laughs> um, so, yeah, there's a potential that dates are going to kind of be the new wonder sweet fruit thing or whatever this year. Um, which I think is fine. I've, I mean, I've, date sugar is a thing that's been around for quite a while. It's not revolutionary. Um and yes, technically dehydrates are kind of sometimes referred to as nature's candy. Um, so yeah, like, and I feel like there are going to be some people and this is going to be a horrible stereotype. So I'm just prefacing it now, you know, <laughs> this stuff will come on the scene. They'll be like, golly, I didn't, I never had a date before. And it's kind of like, wow, <laughs> you know, well, okay. It just hasn't been a popular group. For a while. Right. I mean, we had an Indian. Indiana Jones, bad dates. Well, and that's the the interesting thing is like I, I think as much as we're a worldly planet, uh, we have world economics, like cultures that cross over and touch each other. Uh, I don't think there's enough touching going on. That sounds really inappropriate. Um, <laughs> you know, there's just there's just not enough cross pollinating for people to be aware of things. I think. And um, but maybe it's because our societies have become more insular. I don't know um, maybe. when it comes to that. Another item is kelp. This isn't new or revolutionary by any means in the imagination. It is quite popular in Asian cuisine to be used in various forms. But apparently they think that like this is going to kind of become another item. Um, right. It's theoretically a renewable source kind of like food item that there is so much of it. And it's relatively easy to like maintain and taken care of. But now we're going to see all sorts of things um, with kelp in it, which that to me, I'm like, weird. eh, there's nothing strange about this because this stuff has been out there before. I think that's sort of the issue, too, that as I'm looking kind of through this, this isn't necessarily like I don't want to say new food items. These are kind of like, hey, this is we now know about it. I'll put it like that. We now know about it. So. We're going to now make it a thing. Think, things that are more popularized. Like yeah. they've been around, been, but haven't been really popular. But we think people are going to pick up on this. Yeah. Like I have, I remember, um, I think I went to an Asian restaurant a while back and they had like the kelp noodles. And I was kind of like, I don't know if I'm going to like this. And mm -hmm. I tried it and it was okay. I, it's not my, it wasn't my favorite thing. There's a very different, weird texture kind of to it that I wasn't sure about. But, you know, it does what it can. I I would be curious to try it in different ways. I don't know if I want the pulp puffed kelp chips, though, as I'm looking at this picture. <laughs> kind mm. of like, it, it, I'm curious, though. Right. 
<laughs> I'm Thank usually you. game for trying newer market items when they come out, um, provided it's a decent price. And, but I also find that I'm just like, eh, like nothing really blows my socks off or, you know, makes me want to, you know, tell everybody from the rooftop, this shit's amazing. You need to get some. Uh, so yeah, I don't know. Another interesting thing on their list, which is more trend than it is food, is retro remix, which I find very interesting. This goes back to our previous discussions about uh, nostalgia and our pocketbooks, um, right. and about how taking older things and bringing them back, but making them like consumer conscious. So like sugary cereals that are really not that sugary so like they don't have a, a glycemic hit to uh our blood sugars because all of us are probably becoming diabetic um you know just just things along those lines where i'm like hmm interesting. yeah the um uh i don't know if you it, well if you've been online for a while if you follow youtube or facebook or whatever you've probably gotten um magic spoon You've probably seen an ad or 20 or 30 regarding Mag Magic Spoon. And it is mm -hmm. essentially a brand that makes cereals that are gluten-free, sugar-free, uh, um, like all of those things to kind of like so that it, you get that quote-unquote taste and feel of right. like eating a bowl of cereal as a kid. But it is not the same, sh like, sugary con content. And I have thought about doing it so many times. Because, again, advertising is a thing, and it does work sometimes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then I get the sticker shock. Right. So, high-protein, keto-friendly, sweet and delicious. Find your flavor. And they've got, like, this whole variety. And it's very much triggering all that stuff. Um, and I'm kind of like, oh, okay, that's interesting. And then, you know, you go to look at the pricing and that's where I'm like, okay, cereal can be expensive, but at $10 a damn box. Right. Or like, something like that. It's just not, I think there's, I think they're missing something. I think they're missing the fat boy factor. Like, <laughs> like I'm thinking about this and I'm like, how many servings are in a box? Cause I'm pretty sure, uh, <laughs> there's five servings in this box and it's about this big well yeah like i don't uh i'm gonna have to take a closer look and see if i can figure it out but you know i'm just like this is a little crazy to me like at ten dollars a box um if there's only you know so many like say four servings in a box this is just a guess because i don't know offhand that's 250 a serving mm -hmm. and that's like a bowl and there's a part of me that's like, do you not like you're selling nostalgia? Do you? Oh, you probably really fully recognize that if this shit's good, people going to be eating like a half a bowl or half a box at a damn time. Like that's that's expensive. I mean, to be fair, everything's expensive. Right? So. Yeah, I don't know. Sure. There we go. Nutritional panel. Thank you. Oh. OK, so each box. Oh, sorry, as I'm looking at this. Okay, thank you. So each box is five servings. So two bucks so you, a bowl. Yes. However, a serving <laughs> is one cup. Bitch, I'm sorry. If I'm going to have a bowl <laughs> of cereal, I am not having a cup. <laughs> I'm having a cup and a half to two cups minimum. Yeah. And, and then, like, hello, what do you do? Like, you eat all the cereal and there's still milk left in the bottom because we have this, like, you know, issue about the form factor. So then you got to go back and you got to get more cereal to, like, be able to finish off the milk. What do you mean? All you do do is, is that the, the milk was brewed in the cereal. So you can just <laughs> drink the milk from the bowl. Uh -uh. You don't need uh, more cereal. Some people do, but that's not me. I'm like, no, I've got more milk left over. I have to have cereal with the milk. That's the whole point of it. Anyways. I do not. So you now we've end up lie. eating still crunchy cereal. Then there wasn't, yeah. then I put in too much milk. So anyways, yeah, I, I find the retro remix interesting. 
Yeah, I get that part as I'm kind of looking at these things that they've provided pictures of. And I'm kind of like, yeah, I've seen a lot of these things coming out there. And I'm like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, the, it's 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 that nostalgia feel. It's that, you know, oh, I really would like that or have that back. Yeah. Bringing yeah. it back. Bringing it back. So there's that. Um, yeah. One of the last items is avocado oil. Mm. Appar- apparently that's going to explode this year. Um, avocado oil has kind of been around as a thing. People know that avocados are healthy. Um, they're an alternative, like good fruit question mark. Um, technically it's a fruit. I know. Well, I was, yeah, yeah, I know. I was, for some reason I wanted to say it was a vegetable, but, but because it could be used in so many different applications, but it's got good fats. Well, Um, well, tomatoes are fruit. It's a berry. Right. But we, yeah. Call it and use it culinarily speaking as a vegetable. Yeah. Right. So, so apparently avocado oil is going to go mainstream as an ingredient. Hmm. When it comes to prepared items. I can see that. Um, so although it, that maybe this is very California based. Uh, predictions. Maybe. Because they like their well, avocado I, toast. I know, but that's one of the things that I'm kind of like, well, you're going to take it all with a grain of salt. Um, yeah. and no so, specific salt in mind because I'm like, <laughs> I'm thinking about like how this is creating more demand or utilizing product in certain industries, like, you know, hmm. oh, and the whole foods is actually based out of Boston. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, mean, I like, so through, um, I don't know if he does it as much anymore, but the, um, misfits market. You know, Jim got, um, he's gotten a couple of things, avocado oil based. Like he's got the mayo and he actually has a spray, like a spray of the um, avocado oil for like a cooking spray. That's the word that was coming to mind. I've used the cooking spray a few times and I actually really like it. Um, Hmm. It doesn't necessarily add, I mean, it's not adding like a super ton flavor, but it leaves it not as greasy as if I were using, say, um, Butter or um, any of the other oils I've used in the past. What smoke point is? Yeah, I'm curious too. I think it's kind of high, if I remember correctly. So is it more along the lines of like a yeah, uh, one of our like a canola or something like that? Five hundred and twenty yes. degrees Fahrenheit. Wow. Yeah. Is that like the highest maybe of all the smoke points? I think it is. Yeah. And I, and again, I, you know, I've, again, I've cooked with it a few times and I do like it. And I think it will, you know, I can understand that being the trend. Um, The avocado oil, the mayo was not, I wasn't as impressed with, but Mm -hmm. um, maybe that's because I'm used, I'm not, I, I will own and don't hate me y'all, but I was raised on Miracle Whip. Yeah, that's fine. So, like, that's where right, I... you, you were raised on salad dressing. Yeah. Well, mayo is a salad dressing. As was I. Yeah. Well, yes, but Miracle if you Whip look, is technically if you look labeled at... as a salad dressing. No, I'm pretty sure. Hold on. Let me look. There you go. Anyway. I'm going to go to HEB.com. I'm going to go to my local grocery store and go and pull up mayonnaise and take a look at the <laughs> I'm yeah, pretty like sure the... mayonnaise is mayo. Is but as advertised I've, as a salad dressing. But as I was saying, it wasn't. I wasn't as impressed by it. But Jim did use it specifically to make um, a remoulade sauce mm-hmm. uh, for, our, for. We get crab cakes every once in a while, and he used it specifically. And that's kind of like okay, it kind of worked, and it worked really well. But it just on its own was not as impressive. Right. The make. The avocado oil mayonnaise. Right. Well, and sometimes I think about it's just our palates adjusting because we're so programmed in American cuisine to have certain things certain ways. Um, Like I've been binging and catching up on a YouTube channel that I've been sort of following for a while now. um, Tasting history with Max Miller. And he like talks about like previous like 
ancient foods, quote unquote, or recipes and like makes the dishes based off of like one of the original recipes of where something mm-hmm. comes from and talks about how like it's changed over time and where it came from and sometimes nomenclature, like naming and stuff like that. It's very interesting. Um, but it really kind of shows like at times that like, you know, our palates have shifted and changed because, you know, we're um, spoiled. We we like them. We like things fatty, creamy, mm-hmm. oily. Um, yeah. Yeah. So very much a thing. Yeah. So, I mean, from these things, I'm like, OK, I'm just going to kind of keep my eyes and ears open. We'll see yeah. what plays out over the course of the year, if any of this really turns into a thing. Um I'm not sure. I could see a few of them moving forward and being kind of a trend or a thing for the year. The avocado oil, I can definitely see. Like, that's like, because mm-hmm. I kind of have already seen that. And a few of the other ones I could see as well. But yeah. Okay. So it's not clear from the sources that it was found. And you're right. On Mayo products, they don't actually say dressing, it doesn't say anything. Uh, but when I when you Google, it gets a subcategory of dressing underneath it. <laughs> so it is a sauce that dresses things, whether it's salad dressing. <laughs> Sorry. I'm so amused or by the fact that a hamburger or a to... sandwich. It is a dressing sauce. Right. I'm just amused by the fact that I have to dress my turkey when I go to have a sandwich. But anyways. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know. So that being said... Um, and unexpectedly, when I was doing an internet search, uh, a couple of other things popped up, and this amused me to no end, because uh, that episode where Damon and I um, were the only ones, because uh, Jeff had got the ick uh, and wasn't available, <laughs> I was totally unprepared for the fact that there are already articles about, like, fair and farm show foods. Right. This year because i so don't think about that in january um an example is apparently the pa farm show uh Uh is coming up uh it's literally happening right now today's the eighth right Ah. yes it's running the 7th through the 14th um so they this article came out about some new things that they're running out there and and you know in american cuisine fairs um, the festival season is when you tend to see these like wacky concepts that people will wait in line for uh, uh-huh. to throw money at. Um, so one of the first things they list is apple cotton candy. Sure. And I'm like, why not? Okay. Yeah. I, mm, no, that's fine. A new candy flavor of cotton candy. Like apple? Yeah. Right, right. I'm like, mm, I don't know about that. Um. <laughs> so yeah, so, but speaking of apple, apple pie pizza. So, okay, um, I'm going to talk about <laughs> that is, one for is, a second. It is literally just an apple pie in the form factor of a pizza. Right. So, and I've had, I had that back in the 80s, dear. Um, <laughs> if you went to like Mr. Daddy's Pizza, if you know that, recognize that, that name, their pizza buffet that they had, like, you know, the all you can eat pizza, they always had like a dessert type pizza and it was nine times out of 10 this one it was an apple pie or apple you know streusel you know pizza they also had the cinnamon one which everyone knows but like they always almost always had like something along the lines i'm like that ain't new honey that ain't that ain't new i've been chomping on that shit it's like that was like foreign factor it's the same exact thing well but that's what's funny is like david mentioning it and i'm like i used to make that shit when i worked for pizza hut like <laughs> when I was in college and I was working for Pizza Hut, like we always like if you had a sit down Pizza Hut restaurant, you potentially had the pizza lunch buffet mm-hmm. and it was the pizzas and the salad bar and people would just obliterate it because people are uh-huh. pigs and just make a huge mess. Um, and I worked a bunch of those like lunch shifts and you're just like slinging pie, throwing it in the oven and like it's going out to the dining room and like, you know, people get cranky because they don't want to eat it. And it's like olives on it or whatever. And you're like, shut the fuck up. It's like $8 for your goddamn lunch. Like eat just what we put out there. <laughs> and I think this ma- as a manager in training, there was no method to the madness other than you always had to have a cheese pizza, a cheese and pep, a veg, an alternate meat, um, always a dessert. And I'm trying to remember because I think there was always eight pies out there. And so, yes, like literally all you did 
corporate secret giveaway was take the dough, open a can of pie filling, uh-huh. and just dump it over the pie. <laughs> and then usually you had a like a, a streusel or crumb type topping that was prepared in a package that you just like put over the top, and it came with icing ahead of time as well. And you just bzzz, and you just threw that sucker through, you know, the oven. Actually, the icing would go on last right before we went out to the dining room. But yes. yeah, like there, there's nothing new. No. <laughs> yeah. I remember, I, I I mean, yeah, it was a thing. I don't, I don't, I mean, great that it's, it's going to be at this fair, that's called, or farm, whatever. The farm show, yeah. Yeah, farm show, but it's, 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 that ain't new. Yeah. It's just $2 a piece? Shut up. <laughs> Shit, <the> shit's gotten <laughs> expensive. Inflation, my friend. Inflation. I know. Um, now there is something interesting, and of course we get cutesy names. So we've got this thing called the flying porker, which doesn't make any sense looking at the description, right? Right. I'm like, because there's because there's no foul. I, I like the por- the this. porker part, sure, but where where's the flying? I was expecting <laughs> like some sort of like chicken or turkey and pork. <laughs> It's it all, essentially an all white meat sandwich, but no, it's half brisket, yeah. half pork on a sub roll. And I'm like, that's is not a flying porker. Is it because it's flying off the shelves? Is it something else? <laughs> okay. Which has resurrected two other favorite past shows, Lolly Pork Chops and Lamb Stew. Right. There's, there's nothing like the only way that would make sense is if it was a business and like flying pig was the name of it or something. And then you could sort of understand maybe like, like why they call it the flying pork. This is the Pennsylvania here. Livestock Association. Right, right, right. So I understand it. No, I don't. No, no, no. So from <laughs> here, I'm from Cincinnati and we are known as like Porkopolis and flying pig is a thing here in the city. Like there's the flying pig marathon, blah, blah, blah. It's a thing. It has been a thing for as long as I've been here. Here, it would make sense because maybe, the re- like you said, Gary, Gary, maybe the restaurant's called Flying Pig or whatever. I agree with you, Jeff. This, I would have expected this to be like, if this had been like a half, like half chicken, half pork, or like a, you know, a pork sandwich or a chicken sandwich with bacon you know something along those lines that kind of combine um oh a turkey ooh, like smoked turkey and 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 bacon Mm -hmm. okay that would work but anyway i mean anything bacon but yeah i mean if you're gonna call it flying and flying and flying is not related to your name in any way, shape, or form. Don't call it flying if there's nothing that's flying about it. Yeah. Right. So I don't know. I, I'm kind of like, eh, mixing two pork products, mm-hmm. whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, now, the blended mushroom steakhouse burger, I had to read this and then kind of reread it because I was like, huh? Um, and it's pretty straightforward. It's grass-fed beef with mushrooms mixed mm. in. It, it's just it's a mushroom a, bur- burger. What, how is it well, blended? Well, so there so the patty itself is 60% grass-fed beef and 40% mushrooms. Oh, okay, I missed that part. Right. So it's not quite a 50-50, but right you're like I that's why I had to read it a couple times Jeff because I was in agreement with you. I was like so it's a mushroom burger like you put mushrooms on the burger, but that's not actually <laughs> it. Like it's not mushrooms as the topping, mushrooms are mixed in with the meat. And then it comes with, you know, a uh, roll with cheese and apparently more mushrooms, sauté mushrooms. <laughs> yeah, giving out mushrooms. Stuff. Yeah, mushrooms. they're really pushing the shroom part. Not allergic. Well, to be fair, it is the PA mushroom farmers that are doing this. So. Is people yeah. are allergic to mushrooms? It, you can be allergic to fungus. Yeah. Uh, I don't see I why you would It sounds be. very few and far between, but... Um, yep, totally a thing. Symptoms include swelling of the lips, mouth or throat, wheezing, skin rashes or hives. In other words, being Ooh. allergic to any other food. Yeah. 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 Basically. It is a considered a rare ingestive food allergy. 
Yes. That part, yes. Yeah, I think that's the part. That's that's why I'm like, what? It's because it's so rare. It's never really talked about. Yeah. Anything. Like, I, 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 I mentioned fungus because I technically have a mold allergy. It's minor, mm-hmm. but I have a mold allergy. And mold is technically a fungus. I mean, yeah. Yeah, yeah but, I mean. I yeah, it's a different it. thing. It's, yeah, we, yeah. But, it, yeah. I mean, there's but I, that, that I understand, but I'm talking about like food type allergies. Yeah, micro, yeah. like yeah. shiitakes and what have you. Yeah. Yeah. So, buttons. <laughs> in addition to the, to the fair, sorry, the farm show in Pennsylvania, um, that crazy wacky state to the south, Florida, known as Florida is Man. having a state fair coming up in February because why? Oh, that's right. It's always hot down there. <laughs> and this, this site, this thing, these things, mm, um, some of yeah. them are not really all that exciting. I, I haven't looked I, at them, so let's take a tour. Um, like so the the walking nacho dog, eh, eh. like nothing yeah. super exciting there. It's a, it's a hot dog with uh, tortilla chips. Or corn chips, Fritos. Why are you calling it walking nacho dog? (laughs) Because walking tacos, I get that, are a thing. But instead, you're you're it's something you can just pick it up and and just walk and eat. Right. It's not about the food walking. It's about you walking and eating the food. Yeah. Um, Mexican street corn Sunday. Okay. I will say You're this. Just if they say anything horrible. Mexican and it's coming from Florida, I don't trust it. <laughs> <laughs> Point well made. Of course, I'm from um, Texas. So. The fried key lime pie. Now, there's nothing inventive about this. Right. Um, but I like the concept. <laughs> I like the concept. <laughs> but honestly, the, the form factor is throwing me off because if, if you say to Fat Boy Gary... Fried key lime pie. I'm thinking vintage McDonald's fried pie with key lime filling. Mm. Not. I am not thinking that. Right. I am. I You're am thinking not a thinking hand pie. Picture. A fried yeah. hand pie. Correct. Yeah. And Damon is thinking of like a fucking. I, I mean, like, if they they said like fried key lime pie cup fried or something pie. like that. <laughs> Then I'd be fine. They just need to add the word cup because there's things that are like something pie, something, right? And uh-huh. and it's like, oh, this will remind you of this type of pie, even though it's not a pie. In this case, like it's not me, a pie. Yeah, like me, my thing was, this is literally like you took a fucking slice of key lime pie, stuck a stick in it, dipped it in dough, and then stuck it in a fryer. Like, See, David went literal. He was like, he's like, cut that some bitch. <laughs> dip it in batter and throw it in a fryer. Pull that shit out, because he's thinking like uh, deep fried See, Oreos. Here's the thing: is here's the thing: is yeah. that's something that Minnesotans would do. <laughs> <laughs> right? Floridians are like, no, fuck that, no, 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 no. We're gonna put donuts and graham cracker shit in a cup with key lime filling and like like chocolate morsels, like like white chocolate. I'm just like, huh? They don't oh, like, understand okay. what we what they mean when you you're going to fry something in the state fair. It's literally right. somehow you've you've figured out how to to basically take the original product, uh, batter it, and fry it. Huh. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's 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 my that's my thought. That's how yeah. Minnesotans do it, and they do it properly. Mm-hmm. <laughs> now, and, I and, and everybody laughs, but it's because it's true. Yeah, it's funny. Now, I have to say true. this next one is the one that really um, I'm super intrigued by, and I'm probably going to be super disappointed. Watermelon mm-hmm. sweet tea. <sighs> no. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. So here's the thing. No, that's fair. They're calling it sweet tea, but it just looked like watermelon juice. There's nothing tea about it. Yeah, They're it, saying look pink. They're, you're reading it, and it says it's um, sweet tea with a dose of watermelon juice. That does well, that not look like not... sweet tea. Right, right. That picture is not sweet tea. No, it's not. Right. Like, I'm looking at this, and I'm a little mad. Uh-oh. 
Don't prom don't say sweet tea and then give me what looks like a watermelon like piece like a it, cup it, of watermelon Kool-Aid. Like no. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it, I, it might be a promotional uh, picture just to say, hey, this is watermelon, but because of the color, but. Right. That like, is I was kind of excited tea. on the concept of watermelon sweet tea. Although, to be honest, I just want watermelon tea. I'm not a big sweet tea drinker personally. So, like, I don't eat that much sugar in my life. Uh, will, yeah, like, dep will, depending but... on, on who's making. Well, it, yeah, because I'm not a fan of sweet tea. I'm a fan of sweetened tea, but not mm, right. sweet tea because most of the time when somebody makes sweet tea, it basically is like like tea brewed with uh, 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 corn syrup or just just sugar syrup, and it's it's just way too sugary. It's not that necessarily the sweetness that the pro that's the problem, although it kind of is, but it's just sugar taste to it. So random aside. Growing up, Gary, Jeff, you would hate my family. <laughs> Look, I don't hate your family. I just because they all got tea. diabetes. <laughs> well, that, but uh, also the whole like, the sweet tea thing is a fucking thing. That that's and why I prefer I remember... sweetened tea versus sweet yeah. tea because I know sweet tea is basically uh, sugar, uh, sugar and, water and, 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 tea. <laughs> and tea, a drop of tea. Like that's <laughs> that's sometimes that's what it was. I. So, like I said, random aside, when McDonald's came out with their sweet tea, oh dear, my family was all about it for like two seconds, and my brother was the first one. The, you know, he's he's much healthier now, but back then not so much. Um, he was like, "This ain't sweet tea." Mm. It was because of how it was brewed, but it wasn't sweet enough. Mm -hmm. He only he could only get sweet tea, quote unquote, from one place, and that's where he will get it from. Any place else, it's not sweet enough. And I'm like, this isn't sweet enough. This hurting my teeth as I drink it, sweet tea is not sweet enough. Right, right. Like how how? <laughs> right. Yeah, it, it is kind of wild. So I I I'm I was I was kind of excited by the concept of this. But mm -hmm. honestly, it's the picture that is misleading because mm -hmm. I read the title, but I looked at the picture and I kind of got excited. And then the more we talk about it, the more I thought about it, I was like, this is not that picture is not watermelon sweet tea. That is look, looking like watermelon juice. Right. Like it's, that's it's looking like a like a watermelon or, cooler. Or... Right, 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 right. Or it's watermelon juice with pink lemonade, mm -hmm. which that I'm about. I gotta I gotta write myself a note about this because <laughs> when the summer comes, I want to make some of that shit for myself, like a watermelon um, lemonade. Oh, ooh, that could actually right, be good. right, well, pink, right. Pink, le pink lemonade is the superior of uh, uh, lemonade kites, in my personal opinion. Well, that's because I think it's tartar. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Anyway, so uh, now going back to the fried <sighs> stuff. This, this next one. This thing. child. <sighs> Are th are they trying to seduce fat boys? Is that what is that what they're uh, doing here? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so it's called a Tampa Cuban funnel cake sandwich. So they take a, a Cubano, a Tampa Cuban sandwich, which is Spanish pork, smoked ham, Genoa salami, Swiss cheese, dill pickles, and mustard. But instead of being pressed between Cuban bread, it's assembled with funnel cakes. And topped with a donut glaze. Shut up. Y'all. No. <laughs> First of I all. I will say that's that's good fair food. Right, right. That is fair food. That is fork and knife shit. Mm -hmm. But you know they ain't going to give you no forks and knives. Like people are just nope. going to be eating this with their fingers getting it all over themselves. I. It'll, it'll I be one love... of those things where they're going to go like. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> and and when they crunch down, there's gonna just be all this like sugar coating that's gonna flake off and fall to the ground and crumbs oh. and crumbly and people are gonna be like Whoa. It's it's perfect fair food. I yeah. love hate this. <laughs> <laughs> this is the thing I would be like, God, I want this so bad. Oh no, you don't want this. Oh, you should try it. Just try it. Have it once and be good. And I would eat it and I would love it. And then 10 minutes later, I'd be like, why the fuck did I eat this? Yeah. 
<laughs> this, so what this I'm is one of the is... things you eat for the no- you get for the novelty, and maybe eat, right. it, it's one of those things that you share. Got an half right. share. It. You, don't, you, you, know, get, you only have right. That's just it. You go with your friends. You buy one. Hear me out, children. You buy one, <laughs> and you cut it up and you share it. Mm-hmm. But it, bears are stupid. Is. And they'll each buy one of these motherfuckers alone. <laughs> and then they'll be like, why does my stomach hurt? <laughs> why does my chest hurt? Why am I like walking so damn slow? Right. Oh. Yeah. Why do I, I feel I, bloated? I, I, right. <laughs> why, my back why, hurts. why do I got the sugars? Why, 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 <laughs> why, is, why is my blood pressure so high? Why? See, I don't know. Why is my glucose meter going off the charts? <laughs> right. Oh, yeah. It it sounds delicious, and then it and, and at the same time it doesn't. But I I'm it's it like you said, Jeff. This is perfect, like fair, like food. This, this, this is would fair. Be, food. This is this would this is yeah. quintessential. This is right. this right. gets the Col stamp of approval for being <laughs> a in a, a good fair through good job, Florida State Fair. Right. Uh, you you had some failures, but, yeah. but, you, but you got one. You got one at least. Some of these other ones, I'm kind of like, I'm just giving over them. I'm like, no. Sweet potato um, apple the, pie. Mm. That's like yeah. novel, but ain't nothing to write home about. Nacho Mama. That's okay. just nachos. Nacho fans with nacho fans. With not no pre- fans will appreciate oh. the blend. Oh, okay. yeah. <laughs> we'll make right the Stop with tenderloin steak, everything else you love about nachos. Jalapenos, <laughs> sauté, peppers, onions, green onions, nacho cheese, and ranch dressing. Yes. No. 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 But that's okay, because if you look at the picture. Sour that cream, really look... maybe, but not ranch dressing. Right, 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 right. Right, like they say not they say ranch dressing, but looking at the picture, I'm like, that's sour cream, baby. Like I don't yeah, know. Yeah, there's, no, there's no flex. In and it. it's not on tortilla chips. This well, I don't I think that they're I there. Think the they're tortilla buried chips are there. They're buried underneath everything else. Which, by the way, good nachos. <sighs> one, you can't see the tortilla chips, and two, most of the chips are soggy and cannot hold the nachos. God damn it! No. And That's you eat it with a fork. But like, no. Look on, like, look in the far left corner and the far right corner. Those look like those are, those are chips. kettle chips, like right? Kettle those chip. are potato chips. Yeah. Sorry, That's what I was getting at. This and that doesn't look like ranch. That looks like that looks like sour cream. Okay. So see what well is called correct. shenanigans on this picture. This is not authentic. It does not match the description. Yeah. Yeah. Either either they mistyped the description. Or that picture is not what they're describing. Unless they're right. somehow making homemade corn tortilla chips that look like kettle chips. Sometimes when you make make homemade chips, they end up like curling up and they, they can be a problem. But yeah. Anyway. So this next thing. All right. This is the thing Gary would throw money down on because I am intrigued. The mango nada. Uh-huh. So this is. Slushy mix of mangoes topped with a sweet tangy syrup, lime tangy salt, and a spicy tamarind stick. The tamarind stick, I'm kind of, eh, I'm not so sure about, um, just because I'm ambivalent on tamarind. Mm-hmm. But I was like, Ooh, on a hot day, mm-hmm. that looks good. This could, that could really hit the spot because it's yeah. basically just mango slush, <laughs> right, <laughs> with spice. Like, like I'm looking at it, and I'm kind of like no, but then I kind of listen. Oh, like I could share that with somebody. Like, you know, have it, have that, have something else, like as like you know, a shareable like entree, mm-hmm. and then like scoop that as like kind of like say you got the nachos with the jalapenos and the spicy kind of thing. You could have mm-hmm. this as kind of like a cooling, but a little bit more spice to kind of like you know keep the blood flowing and the energy going. Um. I could, I could, I could get around. I can get on with this one. I like this. Yeah. I wouldn't so be able to take it all by myself. No. Yeah. 
I mean, uh, yeah, I, I think it kind of depends, but that that's got me thinking like uh-huh. when 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 it's hot out, I'm like, ooh, that's what I could do. I could like give me some mangoes and I got a juicer that I never use and I could like juice the mangoes and like blend up the pulp in a blender. Yeah. Anyways. So it's intriguing. Uh, This next item. This is farcical. Who, 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 who thinks this is a thing? Uh Uh-huh. It's called a cookie taco Supreme. Mm Mm-hmm. It says the chocolate chip cookie serves as the taco shell. Mm-hmm. Ma'am, that's not a thing. How do you how do you bake a cookie in the shape of a taco shell? That's the part well, that how I'm do you not make a understanding. Taco shell? Uh, you put it in a thing and you deep fry it. Yeah, that's, right. I mean you kind of that's, you can do the same thing. basically the same thing with the cookie. It's just so that doesn't look like a deep fried cookie though. I mean, it's not deep fried, so. Let me, uh, I can explain because I've watched a lot of cooking shows. Uh, <laughs> you take the, you take like a cookie, like the taco thing you would hold a, cu- a taco in. Like when you're building like a soft taco or a hard taco, you do that, you put the cookie dough in it, and then you put another one on top of it mm-hmm. and it holds the form and then you bake it. Yeah, like so you, you basically a use a mold. Yeah. And you're making the mold. To make the cookie, and then I don't you would fill it in. Now I don't know how big it's got to be. I, I would I would insist that this be be a very chewy chocolate chip cookie. Yeah, this is not going to be a because hard if you if you have the crunchy one, it's going to be really hard to get through, man. Mm-hmm. It's just like it's not it's that big. Really hard you look at, while this photo is is zoomed in. If you think about the relationship size, that's a cherry. So you know what the size of a cherry is. So this whole thing is like what four inches across, maybe. Maybe it's not that across. big. Yeah, it just looks big because of the zoom in on the photo. I just I don't know. I'm like I think it's gonna fall apart. I think it's gonna be messy. I that's think why it's in a bowl. <laughs> that's not a bowl. That's a plate, ain't it? Uh, it might be a bowl. It's a bowl. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just annoyed with this one. I'm, I'm like, I'm like, pass. No, no I, I, I can, I can see. That's fine. That's fine. Yes. I, I, I can, I'm, I'm, it is. I'm okay with that. It's like yeah. a. Mm, I'm not impressed. I feel like a fool and his money are are quickly departed. That's that's how I feel about this item. I'm like, it's just, it's just. It looks like. Oh, so sorry, as I'm kind of looking at this, I think someone took this picture with the intent of making it like you know, viewer friendly. Cause as you look, you can see like half, half the cookie, like the whole part of it, but the second half is cut off or broken off. Almost. Yeah. They did. So they you did, can see the they ice did cream some, inside. Yeah. Cause I'm pretty sure like this was edited because I think that's a bowl. And then at, from this angle, you should see the lower part of the bowl, but they right. erased cut it, it out of the picture. So yeah. 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 I don't know. It's edited. It's, it's problematic. It's very heavily edited as I look at this picture further. If you look at the very top near where the cherry is, you can see kind of where they cut, like literally cut it out, crop stuff out. They they they, they did their erasing tool. They went a little too there were two zealous on the erasing tool. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. So anyways. But it's not my it's they, they should have just it's made sure mine. that it was had a nice background and just left the picture as is. Like the next one. Anyway. Yeah, so the last one on this uh, Florida State Food Fair list is called a cowboy quesadilla. This is okay. This is... Which I feel like saying mm. to people, mm. stop trying stop trying to make it happen. Like, <laughs> it's just a quesadilla. Like, you're trying to make it sound like it's something different or novel. And I'm like, nope. Barbecue chicken, black beans, corn, and cheese. Still a quesadilla. Like, uh, also, nothing cowboy about it. Uh, also... We have inaccuracies here. I think I think it's a text in this case, because there's obviously peppers in there. Right. Because also, if it was, um, maybe, I don't know. There's something red in there. Yeah. Which is not on the yeah. list. Maybe it's both tomatoes and red peppers. I don't think it's tomatoes. It would be. I, I think for Southwest, you would be using like red bell peppers. 
I well, mean, right, but that's the like whole other chili issue. Again, we're back to Florida doing shit that's not in their wheelhouse. Um, <laughs> listen, you, you guys got Florida the Cuban thing working for you. We were really excited about that, but the Southwest Tex-Mex shit, no, baby. Like, just don't. Just don't. It's just a case of you. There's nothing super exciting about this. I'm like, yeah. eh. There's nothing major. This is this ain't. There's nothing new or interesting or intriguing about this. It's a it's a fucking case idea. Like, in right. other words, it's say, yeah. saying, "Hey, we're serving this here," but I would not put this as like a high feature. This would not. Right. In this is not a food that entices me to go to the state fair. That Cuban funnel cake sandwich, though. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. I mean, that's that's the winner out of all. Of these. I want to see that at my local fair, right? This, this summer, this late summer. Right. If right. there is a if there is a food truck or a, like a stand or a booth or whatever, and they got this bullshit on their menu, and I'll be honest, it don't necessarily need to be a Cuban sandwich. If it's like a bacon and ham and cheese or a something well, or see, another, see what I would the, like to the see. Funnel cake thing. Mm. Yeah, I would like to see in Pennsylvania would be. Uh, for a a version of this, because a Cuban sandwich I can associate with Florida. They're near Cuba, right? Right, um, right, right. For Phil, uh, for Pennsylvania, mm. a funnel cake cheesesteak. Oh, that would be interesting. Oh yeah. That See, I'm I'm nice. immediately inclined because of the funnel cake with the donut glaze. I'm immediately thinking. Um, hot chicken, like mm-hmm. Nashville hot chicken, because then you're totally playing into the waffles and chicken, like chicken, chicken and waffles mm-hmm, thing. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So if you had like deep fried Nashville hot chicken between the funnel cake like bits, to make Shut a up, sandwich. Gary. I'm just saying. Uh uh-uh. uh. Nope. <laughs> I don't. I'm. I'm not a fan of hot chicken. I don't like the burn. Well, you can get the regular you put version. In, if you put it, but you you put it between a funnel cake, and I might be tempted. <laughs> the, that sounds the sweet delicious. and the spicy, right? <laughs> that sweet and spicy like combo, like just and then like finish it off with the, that mango nada thing. Oh, ma'am, <laughs> like, and we're done. <laughs> Anyway, so it's a food trends. So honestly, I don't know if there's anything I'm going to take out of this coming into this year. Although I will say watermelon lemonade, mango slushy. Those are things I could probably make at home this summer. I I think we should keep an eye out for, for, uh, state fairs and, uh, slowly compile a list and go through and, and evaluate each state <laughs> state fairs this year. That should be be our New Year's resolution. Why don't we do like do a couple months? Yeah, it's Pencil- So P- Pennsylvania State Fair is already happening. Is that what? No, this that's one a farm was? show. That right. was the farm okay. show. It's Florida State Fair. Never mind. So right. we've got three states between us. Well, I, I mean, we we, we we have to show we have to look into the Minnesota State Fair because if okay, you're so going to do fair food, if it's going to be anything about fair food, right. you got to do the Minnesota one because I I guarantee Minnesota is kind of like the penultimate when it comes to state fairs and food. So, so there's that idea. So there's, anywhere like, in the mid, right. Midwest, like even Iowa, uh, which well, I mean, there's there's lots of them to choose from. There's Kentucky, New York. Texas infamously is a huge fair. Mm. Um, Des Moines, Iowa, Minnesota, Alaska. Sorry, uh, right, no, Washington, Ohio. Yes, I wonder what yeah, the yeah, Hawaii State really? State fair is. Really, <laughs> really, <laughs> really, bitch. <laughs> I can't with you. Florida, <laughs> North Carolina. Uh, apparently, in Massachusetts, they have something called the Big E. It's one of the biggest events on the East Coast. With like 1.5 million attendants, dang! Wow, interesting. Indiana, does, this, does Hawaii have a state fair or something to Quillen? I don't know offhand. State Luau. Hawaii state fair is that a thing? 
uh, space engineering. There's a Maui fair. That's in September. Oh, yeah, there is. Uh, it's apparently held at the Aloha Stadium. Huh. There you go. <laughs> they uh, do it in air conditioning. I don't know. It's probably an open stadium, so it's probably not a... Yeah, it's outdoor. Interesting. Yeah, yeah it's a thing. Apparently. Oh. So Keep an eye out. Yeah, yeah I'll uh, try to compile a list or something. Um, probably won't be till summer. Yeah. Uh -huh. When we get like lists of foods and stuff like that. <laughs> maybe maybe there will be a month where they're all happening, and that's all for shows for the month. <laughs> DOL critiques. We're probably not going to have very nice things to say about some of the foods, but you know. That's okay. It's we're Where's critiquing that? them, based, not based off of us tasting them necessarily, but us <laughs> in the descriptions. Right, right. I had fun today. Did you guys have fun today? That was fun. Guess what? Yeah. I think that's the end. Oh. By the way, let's contact us. Pop over to our website, comesoutloud.com. Leave a comment on the blog. You can also uh, shoot us an email at comesoutloud at gmail.com or leave us a voicemail at 361-COL-TALK. That's 361-265-8255. You can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube at Cubs Out Loud in the appropriate place in the URL. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and ding that bell uh, for notifications when we go live. Um, yes, I did the generic thing. Do me. Uh, also, you can join our Entourage chat on Telegram at tinyurlcom slash telegram -col. You can also find out when we're playing and recording these shows by going to uh, our Google Calendar at tinyurlcom slash telegram uh, You can get various accoutrements, such as a consent is my foreplay shirt, just a logo shirt. Uh, now that we're sicky, here's for cookie shirt. <laughs> our hat, mugs, handy towel. Wink. Oh, wait, uh, like all at Zazzle at Zazzle.com slash Cubs Out Loud. Some of those designs, such as this, uh, was designed by Smashy. You can find more of his work at tpublic.com slash users slash Smashy the Bear. You can also become a patron at patreon.com slash Cubs Out Loud or send us to donation to see uh, help see what we can do to uh, improve the podcast at paypal.me slash Cubs Out Loud. Uh, you can find us on basically any podcasting platform at Apple Podcasts, Google Play, and Spotify, and Amazon Audible, blah, 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 blah. Uh, don't forget to rate us and review us there. The more you rate us and review us, the higher up in the algorithm, the more people find us. Share the love of Cubs Out Loud. Uh, you can find me anywhere on the internet as Box at Box, Poppy Box, Cub Box, something or other, although I'm not very social on the internet nowadays. But hey, sometimes I retweet stuff. <laughs> Damon? <laughs> Um, if, you wish to get in Ooh, if you wish to get in touch with me, you can find me as theatercup79, that's T-H-E-A-T-R-E-C-U-B-7-9, at, on most beer-related sites or on Facebook. Or you can find me as pup underscore umbra on Twitter. The Twitter is definitely not safe for work. Nice. If you would like to get in touch with me, you can pretty much find me anywhere online as GareBear73. And with that, take it on, everybody! Good night, everybody. Have a good one, y'all.